You're listening to Upon Further Review on the Raiders Podcast Network. Here's your host, Eddie Pascal. Raider Nation, what is going on? And welcome to our schedule release spectacular Eddie Pascal, producer Trav, and KMM, all three members of the Remote Boys, checking in to break everything down about the 2020 schedule for the silver and black pre and regular season. So as I said, Eddie Pascal here in beautiful Henderson, producer Trav down in gorgeous San Jose, California, and our very own KMM, Kyle Cannon, Booby Cartwright Martin, checking in from the coastal abode of Alameda, California. And KMM, where do you want to start, brother? You want to start preseason, regular season? What's your, what's your flavor? Let's start at the top and work our way down. By the top, you mean the preseason, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. For those who don't know, Kyle and I are, and Travis are all looking at the same document, but uh, I guess I should have clarified before I asked him that question. So, touche, KMM. So let us begin. And let's just a, a quick disclaimer off the top. Two things. One, I don't know. Kyle doesn't know. Travis doesn't know. What is going to happen in between now and the start of the regular season? We don't know if there's going to be fans. We don't know how the games are going to look. We don't know anything. We are just like you guys. So please, I'm just saving you some time on the back end. Don't tweet at don't tweet at us and ask us what's going to happen. What, how is this all going to play out, guys? Nobody knows. So that's disclaimer one. Disclaimer two: because of the preseason, we don't put specific dates on the games. So there's a span, a day span. So for instance, as an example, the silver and black open up the preseason sometime between August 13th and August 17th at Seattle. The following game. Week two, between the dates of August 20 and the 24th at San Francisco. And then we wrap it up with back-to-back home games on August 27 and 30th, the second span being September 3rd and the 4th against the Arizona Cardinals and the Rams of Los Angeles, respectively. So, KMM, when we look at the preseason, and this is just the appetizer to the real thing in just a second, but when we look at the preseason, I think really the only thing of note, and my feelings, as you know, on the preseason have been well documented. They will go down in the annals of history. I think the preseason is a bit of a farce, but the only thing that I see that really intrigues me is that third game against the Cardinals because it will be, if all goes to plan, the first game at Allegiant Stadium. Yeah, which will be, I mean, it sucks that you have to open the the stadium for the first time with a, a preseason game. You know, I would love if the first time the Raiders took the field, if it was for a meaningful, important game. But uh, yeah, it sucks that they're gonna the fans are gonna have to wait through two preseason games. But nonetheless, it should be exciting. All eyes will be on the entertainment capital of the world for a preseason game. I'm excited to see who we get for the national anthem. Excited to see Ooh. if we get a, a flyover. Oh, there better be a flyover. It's gonna be special, man. It will. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, And I was thinking, too, obviously, I don't like the preseason. I think it's a joke. I think it's a real pain in the backside. It annoys me to no end. That said, this year, definitely a little more valuable than in years past, the preseason, right? Because there's not going to be any offseason program. The reality is these guys aren't probably getting together until training camp. And your starters, your Derek Carrs, your Jason Wittens, your Darren Wallers and, and Hank Ruggs three, you're probably not going to see them in the preseason. I would be shocked if Derek Carr broke a sweat during any of these four preseason games. But on the back end of that is that you have guys now who are going to, the coaches are really going to need to get a look at as they kind of figure out how they're going to build out this 53-man roster. And as a man of evaluation, Cam, and that has to be sweet music to your ears. Yeah, th- that is the only positive that I enjoy from the preseason, that you get to watch and scout guys who won't necessarily get to see the field or even make the team. Um, I don't know, there's something special in trying to find the diamond in the rough. You know, that's that feels like it would be the most gratifying and rewarding part of being a scout. But uh, I feel like in terms of quarterback, you're right, we won't see a lot of Derek Carr, maybe, if any. Uh, it'll probably be in my guess, 30% Marcus Mariota and then 70% Nate Peterman. Um, 
I don't I don't imagine that the Gru Dog and Mayock will want to even risk potentially injuring Mariota. Uh, and we know Gruden loves the Peter Man. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think you're right where you bring up that thirty seventy. Uh, I would maybe go forty sixty in terms of the Mariota Peterman breakdown, just because like we, like we kind of mentioned earlier is Marcus is not going to have had a lot of time at all in this offense. And yes, he has the playbook and yes, they're going through the virtual program and all that, but there is a huge difference between sitting on zoom, like the three of us chuckleheads and talking to football and actually going out there and playing and say what you will about the preseason, but competitive football. So I could see them having a little more rope with Mariota, but you bring, a, you bring up a great point too, where, I forgot who it was that I saw on ESPN the other day. And they said, at this point in 2020, you have to place a premium on your backup quarterback. Your backup quarterback is an incredibly, incredibly valuable piece to your puzzle. So you don't want him out there getting hurt. And you kind of have to, it's going to be interesting to watch Gruden and May. I kind of find, find that line of getting him reps, getting him comfortable in case something were to happen to Derek, but also not putting him in harm's way either. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. I was just going to follow up with what you're saying about the reps. I mean, this is going to be Mariota's first time throwing to any of these receivers and taking snaps with Josh potentially. So not that Josh will be playing in the preseason, but just at practice. Oh, I hope Josh isn't playing in the preseason. Good God. No, there's no reason he needs to. But just in terms of getting a feel for you know the, the people around him and the skill positions, um, like you said, there's only so much you can do through Zoom. The rest has to be in person on the field. Yeah. So should we get into the sexiness of it? Shall we get into the meat of it all, gentlemen? Let's leave the preseason in the past. I, I would like to leave it in the past forever, to be honest with you. If I was if I was commissioner, that's the first thing I'm doing. I'm chopping the preseason in half. Don't yeah. care. Done. Two weeks. Thanks for playing. Still keeping it at 16, though. Anyways, this is what you guys all came for. And at this point, you probably know the schedule. You've probably seen our show. You've probably been on the interweb you've probably been on the network and seen their 18 hour spectacular about the, the preview or excuse me the schedule preview schedule release i should say but here it is your 2020 las vegas raiders Ooh, still getting used to saying that your 2020 las vegas raiders schedule is as follows week one at carolina week two your home opener at beautiful elysian stadium monday night football against the new orleans saints Week three at New England. Week four, home to Buffalo. Week five, away to Kansas City. Week six, bye. We'll talk about the timing of the bye in just a second. Week seven, Tampa Bay. Tampa Tom comes to town. That's week seven, October 25th. Week eight at Cleveland. Week nine at LA. The Chargers, that is. Week 10, back home to play host the Broncos. Week 11, Kansas City Chiefs come to town. Well, that was a hard one to say. Week 12, on the road to Atlanta. Week 13, away to the Jets. Hopefully some redemption from 2019 in, uh, in store with that one. Week 14, home to Indy. Week 15, playing host to the Chargers on Thursday Night Football. Week 16, your regular season finale. Tua and the Dolphins come to town. And week 17, are wrapping it all up on the road in Denver on January 3rd. So, KMM, let's start at the top, baby. Top line thoughts. What do you like? What do you not like? Uh, I love the balance. I love that it's either one game on the road, one game at home, one game on the road, or two games on the road, three games at home, two games on the road. I think there's balance. Last year, the Raiders were on the road for, what was it, six consecutive weeks? Six weeks. That is an insane amount of time they were away from the coliseum for a full month and a half none of that no international games this year uh which will be nice not traveling abroad uh, also chris segue though the nfl came out this week earlier and said that there will be no international games at all in 2020 which to be fair makes complete sense but uh, i'm glad the nfl for once did the right thing on that continue kmm uh, the first matchup that piques my interest, though, is going to have to be Monday Night Football at the uh, – wow, I almost said the Coliseum. Monday Night Football at Allegiant Stadium. I mean, prime time. Uh, it's been long-awaited Raiders' first regular season game in Las Vegas, and they're going to put it on prime time against a Super Bowl contender in Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. Uh, last time these two teams met a lot was uh, – the roster looked a lot different. And these teams were in completely different places, but 
Hopefully Derek Carr can recreate some of the magic he re, uh, he created, what was it, four years ago? And hopefully the Rocket can create a little magic as well. Yeah, yeah, the 75-yard run on the airborne front flip uh, and the two-point conversion, all wonderful memories to start the 2016 campaign. But 2020 is a year of new beginnings for the Raiders, and I'm happy to see that it'll start under the bright lights on Monday Night Football. Yes. I uh, When I was taking a look at the schedule, and I'll get to my thoughts on the balance that you brought up in just a sec, but when I'm looking at the schedule too, man, that week one, we we kind of talked internally like, oh, are we going to have that primetime game week one? Because we had a feeling we were going primetime very early in the season, especially with that home opener. Like, you, you the league has been so excited about this, this stadium in Las Vegas, Legion Stadium. There's been so much hype so much so many people's time and energy so many resources have gone into this project you knew we were getting a game under the lights and the more i think about it i kind of love the fact that it's week two instead of week one because week one there's so much going on there's all those monday night football games there's like a quadruple header or whatever ridiculous thing the league is doing this year but on on week two we're the only game on tv that night that's it all lies of the nfl world are going to be on las vegas they're going to be on allegiant stadium they're going to be on Derek Carr and John Gruden and Drew Brees and Sean Payton. And man, it is going to be a fun, fun night. It is going to be a celebration off the field, hopefully on the field. It, it kind of matches it. I'm with you though, man. There's got to be, a, there's going to be flyovers and fireworks and hopefully people parachuting in. Like, I love that. I'm a sucker for all that pageantry, but yeah, man, that is going to be a crazy game to open up Legion stadium. I'm pretty fired up for that. But you brought up a great point about the balance where when I kind of had my first glance at the at the schedule and I was taking my notes, I noticed only twice do we go on the road for back-to-back games. Last year, as you mentioned, we were away from uh, from Oakland for about six weeks. We were abroad for about 10 days, and there's none of that this year. Last year's schedule to me felt rigged, and I know it's not rigged, but it felt rigged for failure for this team. And you could, there is not that excuse this year for the 2020 Las Vegas Raiders. As you said, very balanced. We were talking off the air a little bit ago, Kyle, how you said it feels kind of front-loaded a little bit when you're looking at it now in early May. And granted, this can change completely by the time we start playing games in September. But when you look at it now, you look at that, that week two game against the Saints. The Patriots are still going to be the Patriots. Granted, Tom Brady's not there. You're on the road to the Chiefs early. Tampa comes to town. I mean, it's... It feels very front heavy. It feels like you're going to have to battle your way up and through the bye. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be a rough, not rough, but it is going to be an ultra competitive first five weeks before you get that kind of respite and Tampa, Tampa Bay comes to town. Yeah. I mean, anytime the schedule comes out every year, there's plenty of teams that you overlook, you know, you look at the schedule and when you're playing them and you think, Oh, that's an easy W at this point in the year, which could be critical. But uh, as we see every year, there's some surprise Cinderella team that comes out of nowhere who takes everyone by surprise. Uh, but just looking at what it is right now, knowing what we know, you know, at Carolina, yes, they have a new quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater, new head coach in Matt Rule, but they still have Christian McCaffrey, who's as dynamic and electric as ever. Then you have Drew Brees, who even though he's older, he's a proven veteran who's capable of leading a team to the Super Bowl. Michael Thomas is no scrub either, or Alvin Kamara, who I know you're a big fan of, Eddie. The great Kumara, huge Kumara guy. Um, but New England, you know, Jared Stidham, uh, who knows if he's going to be their starter. Uh, his first real year, he kind of redshirted last year. So who knows what Bill, Je- Bill Belichick's been able to do with him. Uh, Buffalo Bills, they were a playoff team last year. And the Chiefs... They're a good football team too, man. They're And they're a team that's only going to get better... Josh Allen, another year uh, to be comfortable in that system, to kind of figure out how to be an NFL quarterback. They're, they're no joke, man. They're a good football team. Yeah, and they just traded for Stephon Diggs this offseason, so they get a, a proven weapon for Josh Allen, who's been lacking in that, uh, that department. He's had Cole Beasley, who's been able to get the job done, but they haven't had truly a wide receiver one um, for Josh Allen, but now they do. And then the biggest, the biggest thing for me is a uh, Kansas City Week Five, October eleventh, not in the frigid cold of December. Yeah, thanks, hey, producer Trev. When is the last time that the Raiders played the Chiefs when it wasn't after December fifteenth? Because it feels like every year, brother, we go out there and it's two degrees. Not, not gonna be the case in twenty twenty though. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but I know as long as I've been here, we, I think we've been going there 
in the winter time or late fall. Yeah. I mean, it should be beautiful in October. It really should. Big fan of the city of Kansas city. That's a hard one to say too, but yeah, man. I mean, when I looked at it too, I was kind of just like, man, week five in Kansas city. Did, did Roger and his cronies, uh, did they mess something up? Were they supposed to have that one? Was that supposed to be home Kansas city? But no, no, no. In fact, uh, in fact, it was, it was as I read it originally. Uh, I also like the fact, listen, we we can downplay it all we want, right? We can say, oh, it's just another game. Oh, you know, each one each one is important, which they are. But we all we all want to know when when Tom's coming to town. It, I feel like all the players are going to have that one circled on their calendar. Gruden's going to be, you know, he's going to want to take down the greatest of all time. It's going to be a big game, and I love the fact that we have the buy before it. Like you have enough time to kind of you know relax, reset, recharge, get ready to go to work, and then you come back, and the great one enters the fray at Allegiant Stadium. I mean, that's going to be another primetime game, I should say. That's a Sunday night football game, but ooh, that's going to be a fun night too, KMM. Okay, that's going to be a a good test for the new and improved Raiders defense. Also, the the Bucks have. Tons of weapons and Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, the unretired Rob Gronkowski. You know, now that we have linebackers Corey Littleton and Nick Kwiatkowski, we'll see how they can handle covering a tight end, how John Abram handles covering a tight end, and then how our rookie and second year wide receivers, Trayvon Mullen and Damon Arnett, are able to handle two pro bowlers and Mike Evans and uh, Chris Godwin. It's going to be a battle. There's no denying that. And the Raiders have needed to improve their secondary and linebacking core for a while now. So this will be the ultimate test week seven. Kind of an aside, Kyle, do you buy, and I I almost hate even asking you this question, but sitting here in early May, do you buy Tampa as like a Super Bowl contender, like seemingly everyone else on the, on the planet? I mean, I don't buy them as like winning the Super Bowl, but they're definitely a playoff contender. If you look at that division now, uh, who knows what the Panthers are going to be able to do. Uh, the Saints will obviously be a threat. And then who am I blanking on in that division? There's – oh, the Falcons. The Jags? Oh, no, sorry. The Falcons. The Falcons are – they have the talent, but last year they completely pissed the bed and were winless for, I want to say, oh, five or six weeks. They were just completely terrible. Um, but with the new playoff format, there's definitely a way for Tom Brady to sneak in the door. and. Now those battles between Tom Brady and Drew Brees in the same division are going to be fun to watch. But uh, I do buy that offense. I mean, the chemistry between Gronk and Brady is second to none. Uh, when you think about wide receivers, you can go up and get the ball and be physical. Mike Evans is that dude. So is Chris Godwin. Two big, long, athletic receivers who can streak down the sidelines. Uh, it's going to be a test for defenses. And, I mean, you got to be able to generate a pass rush. The one thing I don't know about the Bucks is how strong their offensive line is. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's great. But Tom Brady, I mean, he's not exactly a mobile quarterback. So if you're able Especially to... Especially at 57 years old. <laughs> exactly. So who knows? And that's another thing, too. I mean, Tom Brady, he showed no signs of slowing down. The guy's still producing, but he's one tackle away from an injury. Who knows? Like, Well, hey, brother, aren't we all? <laughs> For sure, but you and I at 28 and 26 are a lot different than a 42-year-old quarterback taking hits from 300-pound men. Let me ask you this. Serious question. Who's in better shape right now? Tom Brady at like 42 or you and I? Oh, it's Tom Brady. You think so? Yeah. The man, he definitely eats better than I do. He probably takes way better conditioning of his body. He has the money to take care of his body. I don't have any of those things. (laughs) Do you uh, do you think you could beat Brady in a foot race? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Not a doubt in my mind. That man is slower than molasses, but he can he can sling it. Yeah, I mean he is. Uh, I mean he is the master of those quick little little slant routes, and I guess you don't really have to move very far when you're doing that. Uh, the one thing I like on the schedule too, when I was looking at it earlier, is uh, a chance for redemption. Redemption, excuse me in New York week 13 away to the jets. We went away to the jets this year and boy, was that a bummer of a day, just a savage L on the field. We took an L off the field. Oregon lost the night before. It was just a really rough 36 hours. And uh, I like the fact that we're going back. We're going back in December and hopefully 
we can complete the revolution and knock off Sam Darnold, who looked like mother expletive Joe Montana the last time we were at MetLife Stadium. Yeah, I mean, that, that last year, that felt like the perfect example of a trap game. Uh, I don't think there was anyone who thought the Raiders could win that game. If they did, they, it was a toss-up. It wasn't going to be, you know, the Raiders going to get blown out in this one. Not the outcome that it was. Definitely not that. It was a savage beating. Yeah, it was pouring rain. It was just abysmal uh, in all in all categories in terms of weather, outcome, performance, everything. How I felt during the game, everything yeah. KMM. It was, you know, you know what's funny about that too is uh, I'll never forget that that Jets game for numerous reasons, but I'll never forget that it was Star Wars Day or afternoon, whatever you want to call it there, and they had these pretty sweet Star Wars. Um, uh, bobbleheads that they were they were given out and so i pulled some strings and i said hey man like can i get one of the, the bobbleheads and it like i asked for the one that wasn't like a player you know so it wasn't like suit like it was like a green and white like it was definitely in like jets colors but it wasn't like of darnold or something you know what i mean and uh they're like oh yeah man not a problem we'll uh we'll get it sent over to the facility and uh yeah you should have it within the week still waiting still waiting Never, never came. Just like how you're waiting for the Reese's Senior Bowl. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, man. My close personal friend, our close personal friend, friend of the program, Jim Naji. We talked to one of his uh, associates out there in Mobile, what, 18 months ago? Oh, promised us boxes of Reese's. Dozens, thousands, more Reese's and more, more merchandise than you could ever dream of. More peanut buttery goodness mixed with chocolate than you ever dreamed of in your wildest, childish dreams. Guess how much came, KMM? Uh, none. I believe the only merchandise you have is a hat you purchased on your own. Didn't even get a discount. <laughs> full price. Paid full price. Actually, you know, it's kind of funny, though, speaking of since we've gone off the rails, as, as one would expect. I got a text today from FedEx saying that I was going to get a, um, a package from tuscaloosa alabama that i needed to sign for tomorrow and i was like oh man i was like first i was really nervous i was like have i been have i gotten myself into some dicey situations down in down in the delta but then i was like oh my god i want do you think it's my Reese's senior bowl gear <laughs> after a year and a half do you think they finally got around to sending it or what if coach saban is sending you a personalized gift for interviewing him yeah, I didn't think that was one of the that was not one of the <laughs> options I came up with, but uh, it was it was none of those options. It was my uh, it was my wedding band that I had to sign for that's coming in the mail but, from Tuscaloosa. Yeah, man, that's a random one, isn't it? Oh yeah, I wouldn't expect a wedding band to come from Alabama. Yeah, only the finest gold for me. <laughs> only that finest <laughs> the finest Alabama gold for your boy Eddie Pascal. But uh, yeah, man, I, I did get really excited for about two minutes when I was kind of, you know, matrixing and putting all the pieces together. I was like, holy, I wonder if it's the Reese's gear. But then I was like, would I really have to sign for like eight Reese's? And would, would they have my new address? Like they would just send it to the facility and that, you know, it was no good. It was no good. Uh, seamless segue, Kyle, back into week 14, the Colts. My guy Phil Rivers coming to town. Yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be a sneaky good game too. It's funny too. After all these years, we thought we would have a year without Mighty Phil. No, sir, he is back, and he's coming in December, day before my brother's birthday. One oh five kickoff on CBS. We'll see you there. You think the Colts are gonna be good this year? I do. Again, I feel like they they have plenty of weapons. They have a quarterback who will, without hesitation, let that sucker fly downfield. He'll and, slang uh, that thing, baby. He's a wild man. I just, my only concern for them is if Phil can throw as far as Ty well, uh, Ty well, gee, wow, wow, I'm getting really tongue tied over here. My only worry is if Phil Rivers can throw as far as T Y Hilton can run. Is that a shot at Phil's arm strength? Yeah, man, the guy throws it like he's playing slow pitch softball. Yeah, he's good. that slow pitch softball is going to get him into the, the Pro Football Hall of Fame, brother. It will, but it won't get him a ring. Ooh, you're probably right. And you know how much I love Phil, but you're, you're probably right. 
Hey, Producer Trav, if memory serves, we also wrapped up the 2019 campaign in Denver, did we not? Oh, yes, we did. So back to back with our seeing our close personal friend, Broncos Phil. That'll be nice. When does he come out here? Phil's coming out uh, week week 10. Also, one thing that, that I thought was interesting came, I'm actually kind of football related, and we had heard kind of rumblings about this, but division play for the Raiders doesn't start until week five. And once again, Kyle and I and Trav don't know anything that you guys know or don't know. But if you were to, per se, have to get rid of a regular season game, hypothetically that week one at Carolina, if you had to push things back a week, no implications to division play, which I think is actually a pretty pretty smart decision from from Roger and his cronies. But I, I don't know, man. It's a... Uh, I think it, it could be favorable with this year, KMM. It could be favorable. And I think, actually, I'll say this. I think it's fair. And that's all you can ask for. Because last year's schedule was not fair. And this seems like a fair schedule. Yeah, I also like that the Raiders' last matchup, or final matchup with the uh, the Kansas City Chiefs is Week 11. You ripped that Band-Aid off real early. Um, and then... Your final two uh, regular season division matchups are Week 15 against the Chargers on Thursday Night Football. Uh, Justin Herbert will, I'm sure, take over at quarterback some point this season. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if that's by Week Nine when they come to or when we're in LA, or if it's by the end of the season, Week 15 when he comes on Thursday Night Football to Las Vegas. So. That'll be interesting. And then you'll finish out, like you said, with uh, Drew Locke and the Denver Broncos. Real quick, shout out to our guy, socials are Matt Walks, for a tweet he sent out this week. He said, just looking at the schedule and opponents that the Raiders are going to face in 2020, he listed off pretty much every talented quarterback on, on, the, on the schedule, minus Drew Locke, which brought a, a smile to my face. Now, I know you're... You- your feelings on Drew Locke are, are very well publicized. You've made no secret about them. Yes. Did you get in, did you get in Waxy's ear before he sent that tweet? Did you no. have any influencer uh, clout? Zero, zero influence. I saw it after the fact it had been published out on the, the Twitter waves. I find that a little hard to believe. I, I promise you. I, I commended him on leaving. I, I tweeted at him and said, I appreciate that you left off the Broncos quarterback's name. I wouldn't even reference his name. You didn't you didn't even speak of him. No, I did on this podcast because I, you know, for clarification purposes. I feel like Sure, only no, only for but, clarity, only for clarity. But uh yeah, I'm I'm not a Drew Lock believer. He just mm, mm, mm. Not a fan. He's like he's like Baker Mayfield without the winning He's just cocky. Who would you rather have as your quarterback for the next five years, Baker or Drew? Baker, easily. Who do you think's and now? If you could take off your bias glasses, who do you think's a better quarterback, Baker or Drew? Baker. Yeah, I I, I think everything's Baker. I mean, do, do who, if you ask me who I think is a better person, I don't know. That might be a coin flip. <laughs> but <laughs> in terms of who I would rather have, I'd rather have Baker a hundred percent over Drew Locke. Who'd you rather grab a beer with, Baker or Drew? Oh, man. I'd rather pour my beer out, but I'd rather have a beer with Baker. (laughs) I feel like with Baker, at least, though, you're going to have, like, multiple brews, though. Yeah. Like, like, with Drew Locke, like, with Drew Locke, it's, like, it's probably one, like, I don't even know. Oh, God, what do you think Drew Locke even drinks? Maybe, like, a Bush Light? And he's going to get, like, halfway through and be, like, "Um, yeah, do my little little superman or buzz light or whatever yeah. whatever nonsense he does but well we'll also see baker this year so we'll see baker and drew lock and we'll be able to evaluate who had the better game and this is and you know we'll also be evalu- be able to evaluate the really important things like who would you rather go grab a beer with you know yeah oh yeah like that's really what we're we're here to evaluate uh speaking of beers travi do we have a little do we have a few minutes can we crack a cold one is that do we have time yeah, we got time since we forgot last week. I know. I, I We had so much going on last week that I completely spaced on, on cracking cold ones. And my uh, my heart was broken. It really was. Who wants to start? KMM, you want to start? You. I'll start. He's pointing at me. All right, I'll start. 
So Travi, I'm gonna crack this cold one for a, a new a new friend of mine, a new close personal friend, my neighbor Bill. As you know, Trav, I uh, I've recently gotten into the landscaping game, uh, not by choice. I need to make that abundantly clear. I did not get in this game by choice, but here I am. I'm now the proud owner of a lawn mower, and I had to mow the lawn for the first time uh, on Saturday. So I was doing that, pretty pleased with myself. Is this the first time ever? In my life? Yeah. No, no. I, I mean, I've mowed the lawn as a youngster, but this is definitely the first time, oh man, I, 10 years, 15 years. It's been some time since I mowed a lawn. And so I'm out there doing my thing. And thank you for the help also, Trav, in the uh, production of the, or the construction, I should say, of the, uh, of the lawn mower. Trav was very helpful on Saturday as I sent him numerous pictures and texts and queries. So I'm out there doing my thing, mow the lawn. It's a million degrees. And my neighbor, Bill, a nice man, he's a Browns fan. So he actually probably has some pretty favorable feelings towards the bake daddy. But he comes out and he says, hey, man, uh, do you want to use my little, what's the term, Trav, the, the edger thing to get the, you know, it's like you clean it up. Either an edger or a weed whacker. Yeah. And so he goes, you want to borrow mine? I was like, hell yeah, brother. So uh, he lent it to me and I went through and I cleaned everything up. And he's like, you know what? I got to go handle some business. You just wrap her up and leave her on the front door when you're done. Cool, Bill. Appreciate you. And it was just a very neighborly thing to do, and I appreciated it. So, so big shout out to Bill, even though he's a Browns fan. So, uh, this one's for you, Bill. What do you got, KMM? Um, wow, toughy. Uh, hopefully someone will, just bring me up, dude. The last time you cracked a cold one is probably the most morbid beer that any of us have ever consumed. I'm just gonna crack a cold one for myself. I need it. <laughs> God bless you. God bless it. you, Cam. Man, I need it. That's it. Enough said. That's it. That's all. That's all I need to say. I need a cold beer. That's my night. Travi, Travi, bring us home. Uh, well, since it's Mother's Day this weekend, I'll crack a cold one for my mom. So, oh, there you go, Travis Willie Brown Brad. Yeah, exactly. Someone's got to do it, right? Since no one did it at the draft. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. Big shout out to the mothers, man. Hey, and also a big shout out to our guy Max Crosby. Another good guy of COVID-19. If you don't know what he did, head on over to Raiders.com. KMM, you wrote that piece, did you not, about Max's, uh, Max's involvement? I did. I left it anonymous, though. Oh, okay. Well, give the people just to give them a tease. Give them a teaser. Yeah, uh, Max Crosby doing good guy stuff. One of a handful of Raiders who have reached out to donate to various communities during this, uh, this pandemic and this crisis. He donated meals to... Sunrise Children's Hospital in Las Vegas, his new home and new community. Kudos there, helping out the the people who are on the front lines. And then he also donated meals to the, oh boy, the Baylor Scott, and I'm forgetting the other name involved in this hospital, but it's an emergency hospital in his hometown of Coleyville, Texas. Um, good to see that he's given back to where, you know, his roots, where he was raised. Just all good stuff across the board. People helping people, right? Yeah, people helping people. It's powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. We need that. And before we get out of here, uh, last week, we teased some big news on the pod. We said it was coming. And it still is coming. I promise you that. But we needed a few more days to get everything in order to clear, excuse me, to dot our I's, to cross our T's. So the news is going to be put on ice until next week. But I promise you, next week, we will have the news. And the news hasn't changed. It's still good news. It's big news. It's exciting news for all of us. For Eddie, for KMM, for producer Trav, for our everyone involved in our little operation. It's pretty dope. But I told you it was coming this week, and I apologize deeply, humbly, and sincerely for that. So just bear with us. Next week it's coming. I promise you guys will. It's, it's worth the wait. Don't worry. And I think we're out of here, man. Are we? Is this it? Have we? Have we completed the revolution, KMM? I believe so. Actually, last one. We won seven games last year, and I hate when people do this, but I'm going to put you on the spot. We won seven games last year. More than that, or less than that in 2020? Hit me. I'm going to go over. I'm going to hit the over. Travi, what do you got? Hit the over or the under? I'm going over, baby. Feeling good. Feeling all right. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Can we hit a quick harmony, Kyle? I'm going to do that one more time. Because we're feeling good. We're feeling all right. Yeah. yeah. That's better. It's a little harder on Zoom. It's much better when we're in person. but A little bit of a delay. A little bit of a delay, but that's all right. No pun intended. That's all right, all right, all right. So for Eddie Pascal, producer Trav, the great KMM, and for all of the people that help get our little program from A to Z, we thank you deeply, humbly, and oh so sincerely for coming and hanging out with us. And thank you for enjoying the schedule. And I hope you guys uh, consume all the tent that's on Raiders.com. And Lord knows there's a lot of it. But we appreciate that. Keep hanging out with us. And make sure, guys, you come back next week when we actually unveil our big news. So until then, we will catch you guys. Well, I guess we'll catch you next week. Yeah, our normal time. I'm just looking at Travis for our programming schedule. I'm trying to think out loud. But we're normal next week, right, Travis? Yes. Okay, we're normal. Thank you, Travi. So we will catch you guys in the same time, same place on Upon Further Review. Thanks for listening to this edition of Upon Further Review on the Raiders Podcast Network.